evening, morning, uh, everybody that's uh, coming here. I appreciate you coming. I hope you are enjoying this conference as I am, because it, All Things Open is one of the best conferences for learning technology. So uh, I think that's great for all of us that uh, this year we were able to do that even online. So this session is going to be about uh, streaming data, right? Uh, I'm going to spend a little, a, kind of five minutes explaining like what, what streaming data is so for those of you that never heard about the term before. And the way we are going to present this is using the game Pac-Man as, um, as a technique for making things a little easier to understand, right? Because streaming data is usually kind of a very complicated uh, thing to, uh, to observe. So uh, this is something that I felt that using a metaphor like Pac-Man, it helps us to um, digest a little easier, right? So uh, my name, for those of you that don't know me, uh, my name is Ricardo Ferreira. Um, here we go. Right. The clicker is not All right. It's back in part. My name is Ricardo Ferreira, and I work as a developer advocate. Uh, so I like to explain that my job is primarily to connect people with knowledge. Right. So uh, I currently work in at Elastic. So uh, probably you have heard about Elastic before. Elastic is the company that's behind Elastic Stack. Uh, Kibana, Logstash, uh, Beats, and Elasticsearch. Uh, previously, I've worked in other technology vendors such as Confluent and Oracle and Red Hat. And primarily, the, the type of technology that I like to uh, work with and talk about it is streaming data, big data, analytics, NoSQL, and cloud. So those are the things that if you're interested in learning a little bit more, I'm more than welcome to do it. Um, I've put here all my contacts, like my email from Elastic, and my personal email, as well as my blog here on the bottom, right? And for those of you that use Twitter, please go ahead and follow me on Twitter. Um, you, from time to time, I kind of share some interesting content right there as well, right? So let's get to it. Uh, what is streaming data, right? So streaming data is basically an architecture style, right? Uh, it's usually known as well as a streaming data architecture, right? So the whole reason why this architecture style has been built and uh, concept is to solve the problem of how do we don't let data to perish, right? So there is this um, uh, kind of a report from Forrester, it's called Perishable Insights, that basically evaluates in a timeline where the data becomes perishable, right? So when data becomes stale uh, per se. So if you consider the, uh, the, uh, the exact moment when the data happens, right, when the data was created or uh, generated by some application, right, uh, if you take the decision up to the window of real time or even seconds, minutes, or perhaps we might can think about some like streaming data scenarios uh, considered hours as well. It could be considered streaming data as, a, as although not so fast as seconds and minutes, is where you can actually uh, take advantage of what actually happened in a given point in time, right? Uh, but if you contrast and compare about how we actually implement this type of analytics architecture these days, right? And how we've been doing for the last probably, I don't know, 30 years, is we've been using this traditional bat-oriented analytics where all the data is actually analyzed in the sphere of days and or months, right? Uh, the, the justification by why we're doing this uh, varies a lot. Uh, I've heard of people saying that, yeah, the problem is that we cannot process as, in, as the data happens uh, by the time they happen because our systems are going to slow down if, we're, if we do this, right? Or perhaps, uh, no, maybe we're trying to like first gather the data, store it, and then we're gonna, <laughs> we're gonna figure out what to do with the data later. So you name it. I mean, there's a lot of um, scenarios where the justification is we have to process the data later. But the problem is, by the time we process the data later, maybe we're uh, leaving aside some window of opportunity or maybe a threat that could be identified in a spot, right? So that's why streaming data come into place, right? So as I mentioned before, streaming data is a uh, architecture style. And like any architecture is comprised of, of layers. So uh, there's the source data layer, which is basically represents the data that is being generated by some application, right? Uh, there's the stream ingestion layer, which is essentially the layer that's going to take care of, uh, it, it knows how to handle and read the source data somehow. And it's going to be responsible for ingest this into something that we call the stream storage or a stream buffer, some 
some technologies out there or some vendors like to call stream buffer as well. Uh, I like it to call stream storage because it makes sense because it is literally a storage for uh, data, right? And why are you gonna store that, right? It is basically a buffer because furthermore, you're going to process, you're gonna process those streams, right? You're gonna shape those streams somehow for the purpose of doing analytics, right? So uh, the way to interpret this architecture style over here is that this is the end, this is the end game. Uh, doing analytics is what you wanna do, right? But before you actually doing analytics, you have to transform your source data into a shape, into a format that can be like a, you can handle easier in the analytics layer where you no longer have to do some transformations, some aggregations, some enrichments and things like that, right? You're just play with the data, right? I know this is very complicated. Like, but the first time I started uh, studying this concept before, this is the phase that I've done, right? And streaming data architectures are fairly kind of a complicated to understand. And that's why I've created this kind of a, it's more than a, an approach, it's more like a demo, right? That I call the Pac-Man demo, right? It's a way to teach complicated um, subjects such as streaming data architectures, right? So the way I choose to present this uh, session here specifically today is I'm gonna let you literally play the game Pac-Man here. So you're gonna actually grab your devices or computers if you have it and you're gonna get to play the game and why you're gonna do this, right? Because the first thing you're gonna ac actually help me with this demonstration is to generate what I called before the source data, right? So the source data will come from the events that will come from your games, right? Um, so what I'm gonna do, what's gonna be my responsibility, right? So I'm going to transform that source data that will end up into my stream buffer or stream stars layer, which happens to be Kafka in this demo, right? And I will create this, let's call it application for now, but I'm going to create this scoreboard application, right? So the scoreboard application, the purpose is real simple. It's going to list all the players that are playing or have played before, right? Because it handles historical data as well. And it's going to sort them in a such a way that the players who have the highest score or the highest level or have not lost too much is going to be hanked in the, in the first positions, right? And you're going to see that this is going to happen in near real time. As you play, the scoreboard is going to be automatically computed and redisplayed. That's the goal. That's what we are going to build over here, right? But as I mentioned before, first we need to do uh, before actually playing and implementing anything we need, data, right? So let me explain the architecture of this application. It's not very complicated. Uh, once you understand the relationship between the, the source data the stream buffer or the stream storage, the stream processors and the analytics layer, right? So the source data, what's gonna be the source data as I mentioned before, the source data is gonna be uh, what the events that will coming from out of your phones. So you're gonna have, you're gonna play with your tablet, phone, computer, whatever you wanna choose as a device, right? And as you play, basically the application has been uh, built to invoke some APIs. Everything is running on AWS right now, right? Uh, so is gonna invoke some APIs that are being exposed by an API gateway that I've provisioned on AWS, right? So it is a REST API ultimately, right? So by the time this API is actually executed, the backend implementation of this API is a Lambda function, right? Which is, I happen to wrote this in Java, right? But it could be anything, right? It, I could have written this in any programming language. Uh, I have chose write Java just because that this is my thing, right? This is what I'm best at it. Uh, and then the job of this Lambda function is essentially to grab the event and to write into a Kafka topic, right? Kafka, to Kafka is being used here in this demo as my stores layer. So all the layers on the application basically communicate through each other using Kafka, right? So uh, I'm gonna call this input data, right? So the input data is gonna be uh, written here. And then my job, as I mentioned before, it just is to transform this raw data into something that can be looked like into a scoreboard, right? And for that, I'm gonna use a stream processor technology. It's, it's actually a database. Uh, it, it can be considered a database called KSQL DB, right? Uh, although the name DB stands for obviously database, right? 
Uh, KSQLDB is what we call a streaming database, right? A streaming database is a new type of database where it's totally and 100% driven by events and streams coming in. And then the purpose of this database is to reliably and durably store those events and process them as they happen, right? So KSQL DB is, has been built on top of Apache Kafka, right? So uh, if you ask me, uh, where the data is actually stored, where the data is actually being, uh, it's going to end up after the processing Kafka, right? So you have the concept of input topics. You're gonna have your processors that are gonna handle the input topic and whatever the processors uh, came out as output is going to be flushed into let's call output topic. Ultimately, every, all the data, input and output, lives on Kafka, right? So this is one of the key characteristics of implementing uh, streaming data architectures using uh, KSQL DB and Kafka, right? So Kafka is your uh, storage layer, right? Okay, so let's start with the fun part, which is you actually playing the game, right? So what I would like ask everybody to do right now is to grab your devices, either phones or tablets, right? I've, I've tested this basically for pretty much with all devices. If you happen to use a device that don't work, uh, let me know, right? Because this is gonna be like a PR for this project that I've created, uh, but hopefully it's gonna work for everybody. So uh, this is a web application. You don't have to stall anything, right? So scan this barcode over here and you're gonna be able to actually um, see the game, right? And the game is gonna ask you to provide a name, right? Which can be either your name itself or it can be your nickname or something that uniquely identifies you, right? This is gonna be important for the scoreboard so you can see uh, your name on the scoreboard, right? Uh, please be nice, right? Because you, and, and the application, you can write whatever you want. So uh, be polite with whatever you write there because, because it's gonna show up here on my screen. So uh, I'd like to conform with the policies of the good behavior of the conference. So. Uh, please uh, help me out over here, right? Uh, so yeah, uh, for those of you that maybe would like to use computers, uh, I'm gonna share right now here on the chat, the URL of the game. So you don't have to actually scan the barcode. So I'm gonna stop sharing just for a second, right? I'm gonna do this. And this is the URL of the game. I'm gonna put here on the chat for everybody. Um, all panelists. So this is the Pac-Man game URL. So uh, here's the, the, the URL. And while you're there, I'm gonna actually monitor to see if, the, if there's somebody actually playing here using this window over here. I'm gonna explain what I'm using right now, later on, but for now, just see this as my uh, troubleshooting engine. Yeah, there's some people playing. That's good. Like to see that. And let me know if you still want to have the barcode somewhere. But the URL, it's on the chat. So you can grab from there from there as well. So I'm going to give you like uh, two minutes to play because we have to have data right, in order to actually start building anything useful. So just have fun. Can you resend a link to the chat? Yes, uh, Paige, I'm going to resend a link. Bear with me for a second. Uh, and let me know, Paige, if you got it. All right. So otherwise, I can send again. So you, you can continue to play, just hear me out. Uh, when I said that a streaming data architecture is comprised by the first layer that's called the source data, right? Where I was referring to literally is this. So this bunch of characters that are coming in continuously is what we call the stream data, right? Why stream data? Because the main characteristics of streams is that they happen continuously, they never stop. There's no, oh yeah, no, there's a batch window of uh, eight hours where we're gonna cut that off and then we're gonna process whatever has been comprised of that window. There's no batch in here. There's no windows. Now, that's the main characteristics of a streaming database versus a standard 
relational or NoSQL database where you, and, and, and those type of databases, you handle what we call a point in time uh, data, right? With data that has been captured in a given point in time of, uh, of life, right? Uh, and a streaming database, all the data happens continuously all the time. There's no finish, right? So that's why the industry had to create a new technology to handle that type of situation because the existing database were not able to uh, handle that, right? You, you can try to implement using a relational database, for example, probably it's gonna work. Like uh, you can try to come up with some sort of a polling mechanism that keeps like reading the database and hitting the database, database every one second, for example. Uh, that worked, yeah, okay, but it's not streaming, right? You, and in the end of the day, you are still handed a window of one second, right? So it's not continuous, right? Oh, okay, so Paige, um, sorry, I didn't see your, okay, so let me try to send that data. Oh, I am sorry, Paige, that was my fault. My apologies, because I was sending only to the panelists not for the panelists and the attendees. So you should have right now, just let me know. You're welcome. Okay, so um, because I've made a mistake of not sharing with everybody, I'm gonna still give you like two minutes, one minute and a half to play, okay? And then we can continue from there. All right, so 45 seconds left. And then I'll ask everybody to please stop playing for a bit and then so you can see the implementation of the scoreboard. Okay, so let me ask you this for everybody. Could everybody right now stop playing for a second? And I want you to look at here to my screen. So what should happen is that no, no new enters should come in. So I can see that there is a person called, they call itself No Worries and Oswell Page are still working. Okay, they've stopped playing right now. No worries, okay. So that's, you see, that's the beauty of streaming data, right? Uh, because they happen continuously, you can actually monitor what's real time or not. So by the time nobody actually playing, no events should come in right now, right? So no words is still playing. So I would say to no words, no words, okay? Just keep in mind that I would start implementing this scoreboard right now. And you, you, you probably want to not miss at this, but anyway, if you want to play that, no words. So I'm gonna actually uh, decrease the screen a little bit. Let me know, just give me the feedback right now about the, uh, the font size because we're gonna see some code, all right? So is the font size that I'm using here okay? Like uh, just put in the chat, good enough. Thank you for the feedback. Font size is good, Robin, thank you. Okay, so I'm gonna stop this, all right? So first things first, okay? 
Remember when I told you that I'm going to use KSQLDB to actually implement this pipeline application? KSQLDB is a, a streaming database, but curiously enough, uh, although the data is stored on Kafka, what you actually build on streaming on uh, KSQLDB is not a database. You actually build a application or actually in a plural form, you build applications, right? So what we're gonna do here is actually build a, a set of applications that's going to take the raw data, we're gonna shape them out. So we're gonna produce uh, output that's going to be used as a scoreboard, right? So I have a KSQLDB cluster running on AWS right now, right? So what I've done here before that I did it real quick, but I didn't explain is I'm using this CLI, which is installed on my machine, right, locally that is pointing to this cluster on AWS, right? So ultimately you can actually uh, develop on your machine pointing to a cluster that's running somewhere else, right? Or maybe a Docker container, maybe on Kubernetes or something something like this, right? So I'm gonna connect it. Uh, and what I'm gonna do right now is basically a, a help check, right? So I'm gonna list the streams and tables that I currently have. Ignore for a second this KSQL processing log this is a stream, but this is kind of a, a built-in stream that comes with KSQL DB, so you don't take this into consideration. So technically, we don't have any streams, and we don't have any tables at this point. What we do have is topics, which is essentially the Kafka topics that are available in the Kafka cluster, right? The data that you were seeing before is stored on this topic here called user game. So if we print the topic user game from beginning, we should see all the data that has been stored there until the beginning of the day until now, right? So no worries, is it still playing? No worries, okay? So I'm gonna stop it. So this is what I call the source data, right? So before you actually start with KSQL DB, you have to shape the data into a format that you can handle it, right? And one of, one of the most amazing things that KSQL DB does is to bring you a notation that looks like a lot with this so famous language called SQL or structured query language. So what we're gonna do now is actually create our first stream and the notation is great stream, you're gonna name it. Usually the name of the first stream is the same name of the input topic, which also happens to be user game. And then you can set a structure of or a schema, if you will, that's going to shape the format of that data. It happens to be JSON in this case, but uh, it could be any other format because one of the cute things about uh, Kafka is that Kafka is this essentially schemaless, right? Kafka stores a hay of bytes. So uh, it could deal with any format that can actually be supported here in KSQL DB, which can be CSV, JSON, Protobuf, Avro, or you can plug your implementation if you are handling something that you are not so common, right? So now we have a stream, okay, called user game. And then because we have a stream, um, actually, I'm, let me do this. I'm gonna drop this stream for a second because I forgot to do something really, really important, which is for those of you that know Kafka, you're gonna recognize this command over here. I'm gonna move the offset of my Kafka for the earliest, which means that whatever I create over here is going to consider it the existing data and the new data that's coming in, right? If you don't do this, it's going to work obviously, but it's only gonna consider the data that's coming in right now at the moment, okay? So now that I have done this, I can actually repeat the statement of creating the streams, okay? And now I can actually select that stream, user game, right? User game. And what you should see here is the same data. The, the, the data set's gonna be the same, right? Although now we are dealing with a format that we can handle using this notation called SQL, right? So this is the data that has been stored before plus the data that's still coming in, right? Probably is a lot of data, so I'm just hit counter C, right? And then there's another topic that I've, I haven't explained yet, but it's called user losses, right? So in the game, there is this concept of game over, right? So what is game over? You start the Pac-Man game with three lives. If you lose all the three lives, you're gonna game over the game, right? So every time you as a, as a player game over is going to emit an event 
to this topic called user losses, right? So now that I have a stream user losses as well, let's query this user losses topic to see if someone had already came over in the game, right? So the name of the user should show up here. I'm sorry to, uh, actually there's a lot of people actually that game over, so it's no shame for everybody. So that's good, All right? So I'm gonna pause, it's working so far. Now that's the interesting part, right? Or KSQLDB also supports the concept of tables, right? Uh, so far we have been dealing with streams, right? What, what are streams are, are things that are continuously happen over time, right? There's no end. But if you wanna create a point in time representation of a data set, right? That is a, it is a fixed window, right? It, it is continuously updated, right? Because the source is a stream, but it is a point in time representation of a data set, you can create tables, right? So right now, I'm gonna create a table that I'm gonna call stats per user. And it, I'm basically going to select the previous stream that I've created, right? I'm gonna come up with the column user. And look at that. I am actually can uh, navigate to a structured uh, type that basically I have a field called game that has an inner field because it's a JSON, inner JSON payload. I can actually use that notation this, using this arrow over here to navigate through that structure, right? So I'm gonna come up with, this is an aggregation operation, obviously, right? I'm gonna come up with the highest score and the highest level, and I'm gonna group by user, right? So the table has been created, let's check it out. So we should have one table now. Let's query this table to see the contents of it. So stats per user. So you're gonna see that now we're not gonna have the, uh, the fuzzy, the, the noise representation of all those streams coming in, but now we have something more uh, like easy to use, which is a table, right? That we can actually work with the columns and for, for every user, for example, I'm gonna pick, um, pick myself over here. Ricardo, uh, the, my highest score when I was testing this earlier was uh, 1,360 and I was in level one, right? So uh, now you can actually use that data that's going to be the scratch of the scoreboard, right? So that's what we're going to do now. The scoreboard actually is going to be a mix of this information over here, the stats per user, with the information of how many game overs each user have done, right? So we have the stats per user, good. Now we have to create the losses per user. So I'm going to create another table. Right, so now we have created, and then I'm going to actually select the losses per user to see if the data is there. Okay, so I, we should have user and the count of losses. So good, All right. So we, we already have the stats per user which represents 50% of our scoreboard. Now we have to pick up this stats per user that we already have, and this losses per users that obviously we already have as well. And we have to join them to come up with a new data set that represents a single view of a scoreboard that has the, the stats per user and the losses per user. And how are we gonna join them? Because there's a common information about in these two tables, which is the name of the user. We're gonna use the name of the user as our, let's, it's, it's, not, it's not applicable in this terms of a streaming word, but we're gonna use as a primary key and a foreign key, right? But I mean, it's more like a metaphor than actually a technical term on the streaming word, because this is not what actually uh, happens behind the scenes. Uh, this is not a relation of database, right? So I'm gonna create a new table that as you can see here, we're actually selecting two tables. We're, we're selecting stats per user and we're performing here left join against the losses per user, right? And then we're basically uh, selecting the user, the highest score, the highest level and the total losses. But as you can see here, I kind of created this case when statement just for the sake of 
coolness because we want to treat the, the scenarios where if there are no uh, game, game overs, it's going to be no. And instead of uh, showing no in the table, I want to show simply zero, right? So you can actually handle this with a, with a case when statement. So I'm going to create it right now, right? And obviously, like we've done before, we should test it to see if the data is there. So we're going to select everything from score board. And you have been seeing that I'm using this clause here called emit changes, right? So what that does, let me just explain because this is a case SQL DB thing, right? It's not a very common in uh, NC92 SQL. Emit changes is when you are dealing with something that because it's continuously happen, happening and being updated, right? You want to show the output, but you want to you want to show in a way that you keep emitting the, all the changes that happen after you executed that query statement, right? So it's like we want to leverage the the best of both worlds, right? We are dealing with something that is a static, but we wanted the continuous updates at the same time, right? So that's what emit change uh, has to do, right? So look at that. Now we have an actual scoreboard, right? And because we've created a scoreboard, you can actually see this on, on your game because let me pick up the URL of the game again. Uh, okay, this is the URL. I'm gonna click it and it should pop up here in some browser. Here you go. Hopefully you can see my screen. Come on, last pass. I've authenticated this morning. I don't have to provide my credentials again. All right, so ignore it. So I'm gonna actually come up with my username, which is Ricardo. And look at this, look at this. I want you to pay attention on this. So as you can see here, I'm gonna run the scoreboard again. I wanna retrieve my exactly last score, which should be something like 1,360. Is that correct? Yeah, 1,360. So this application actually, uh, Sorry, this game actually work as an application. So your name is your key of your session, right? So that means that if I click play right now, right? The game will start, right? Uh, after this animation and in the bottom, I'm sorry, in the top of the game, I should see my own score, right? Which represent my last stored store, right? Just like you would do in a database. So you can see here, I'm gonna pause the game because now I wanna play right now. You see here that now I have a 1,390 and it should, should show up here because I used the call emit change. So it's continuously being updated. But what I was telling before is that from your game, you can actually click here on the scoreboard. If you click, you're gonna see all the players with the same data that is this scoreboard table is presenting, but in a sorted fashion, right? Because here, uh, no worries, which is funny that no worries is called no worries because it's definitely the best player so far. Uh, so congratulations to you, no worries. Uh, because as you can see here, all the players are sorted against their score level and losses, right? So this is one of the cool things about, uh, I mean, if you, if you pay attention about what we have done in the last 10 minutes right now, we started from the raw data, right? Which is basically the events come from the game that were being stored on a topic called user game, right? And then from that topic, from that uh, raw data, we start actually creating something that can be easily recognized by any database developer called ETL pipeline, right? ETL stands for uh, extract transform load, right? Uh, although we're, we did not necessarily did an extract transform load per se, right? But in a sense of, uh, we had the input data coming in and the input, uh, user game topic. We were able to actually create new views of the same data, mutate the data, augment the data, enrich the data, aggregate the data, filter the data. And we were able to actually come up with a new data set that can be seen right this in a new real time. And when I say new real time, uh, I'm not sure if someone 
actually, uh, could I ask everybody to uh, play again? Like, I'm going to give you two minutes because I want to see here the data actually being shown alive. All right. So go ahead and play again. So this should be like updated continuously all the time. Yep, it's been updated. Uh, ultimately, one of the key one of the key characteristics of uh, imagine that you were starting a project, a data oriented project right now, and you were in doubt if you are use you're going to use a standard relational, NoSQL, or standard database for your project, or if you want to use this path of using a streaming database such as a SQL, right? And you're worrying down about which option to choose, to choose from. I would say that if you are interested in seeing this, which is, what, what is this? What we are looking at here right now, we're looking to a data set that is alive, right? That you don't need to keep calling the database to keep updating all the time. You don't need to keep like a, a batch jobs that run every midnight to process the data from the, the business hours. And then you can uh, plot and show the data in the next business day, right? You, you want to see something that actually represents what's happening right now, what's happening at this exact moment. So th if this is your requirement, this is going to be the motivator, the architecture and motivation for picking up streaming databases. So this is basically the recommendation that I would have for you. Uh, regardless of the implementation technology, right? there's a, a lot of them. Uh, I'm, I'm particular, like, I like a lot KSQL DB because not only it's a technology that is produced by the, one of the companies that I used to work, which is Confluent, right? Which is a great company. But it is a very simple to use technology. But it is there's no there's not necessarily only KSQL DB available. There's a bunch of other stream processors frameworks available, right? So um, I would say uh, stick to the architecture principles of what you are trying to accomplish, which is a near real time data set that is live. Okay. So uh, before we actually wrap up, we have two minutes and a half. I would. Please just stop playing for a second. Just hear me out over here because I want to show something really, really, really cool. Because right now, this application over here, let me come back. So as you can see here, obviously the No Worries, which is currently the best player so far, uh, has the highest score. But if I play again my game over here, right? Can you see here that there are, I'm going to pause so you can, see what I'm talking about. Uh, there is the score, which represents my score, obviously, right? And there is this field here on the UI called highest score, right? That it should conceptually show the score of no worries, which is the best player, right? But it's not working right now because the table that actually computes the highest score haven't been created so far. So let's create this last table, right? So we can actually wrap up this presentation. So in here, we have this last table that basically performs a select, calculating the max of the highest score and grouping by, I just come up with a key here that I could use it for searching purposes, right? I'm gonna create this uh, last table. It has been created already. So we should see a new table here. So high score is here, oops, okay. And then I'm going to actually come back to the main screen. I'm gonna just force a refresh here just to be on the safe side. But what should happen right now is that I should see my old score and the no worries scoreboard. So let's see if that works. Yay, it works, right. So 
damn, no worries. You are you actually have a very good high score. So the high score here is 54,480. That's probably still belongs to no worries. Let's see here. Yep, it belongs to, uh, I'm not sure if it's him or her. So apologies, because I don't know. I'm not looking at you. Uh, but yeah, so now we can actually, can you see that actually the, even the application becomes more responsive, right? So we're dealing with data that is actually right now, and we're shaping new data sets as we, as they come. And then the application simply tr translate what's happening, right? Obviously, right? Uh, so yeah, my time's over. Uh, we're going to open up for Q and A right now, but, uh, just to wrap up what I was saying, um, you can actually build really responsive applications using the concept of streaming databases, right? So that's that's the final word I would like to share with you. So without further ado, I would like to open up for questions if you have any. Um, and uh, you can unmute yourself or you can, I'm looking here to the Q and A tab as well. So, Just let me know if there's something I could clarify about this presentation, something that you have some technical questions about Kafka or KSQL. Yes, so it seems we have one question now. Change the topic and more. Okay, so there's a question on the Q&A that is, is a table and or a stream just a topic with more metadata for Kafka? Uh, yes, ultimately a stream or a table ultimately is just another topic on Kafka, right? So uh, long story short, KSQL DB has been built on top of Kafka streams, which uses a transient layer uh, based on a NoSQL database um, that basically kind of uh, materialize all the temporary data, right? Why it was being processed, but it's gonna ultimately flush into a Kafka topic, right? So yes. A uh, stream and a table ultimately is a Kafka topic, right? With metadata, right? There's some metadata uh, related as well. Any other questions? It seems there's just one question that came in on the chat. What are some of the use cases you've encountered in the wild? Oh, okay, in the chat, right? Okay, what are some use cases you've encountered in the wild, right? So yeah, I think one of the most famous use cases is um, ultimately you wanna work with a data lake, right? Or a data warehouse, but you wanna actually handle data that is continuously coming in, right? But the only thing that this data lake understands and the data warehouse understands are data that is a uh, finite, right? It's a point in time query. So you usually come up with a streaming data architecture that sits in front of your data warehouse or data lake that is going to actually come up with a new data set that's going to be stored on your, let's call analytics layer, right? Uh, typical use case for this is having using like a Kibana or Elasticsearch for this analytics layer, right? Or if you were in a cloud provider, maybe you were using like a BigQuery on Google or using, um, I forgot the name of the data warehouse solution for an AWS, uh, Redshift, right? So you use the streaming data architectures to like, a, let's call ease up, right? The job of the data warehouse, right? So this is a very typical one in case, uh, IoT, right? In an IoT word, you usually actually has a lot of events that needs to be computed in near real time to produce something that uh, the users can handle, right? So in the IoT world, it's usually very common to apply streaming data architectures as well. Um, and yeah, I've, I've used it also some banks starting to use streaming databases to handle like fraud detection as well. Um, it's very unorthodox because banks are very, very conservative in terms of how they handle data. But yeah, there's some banks, even in the US, 
that are actually uh, investing on streaming data architectures for it. So it's growing a lot. It seems that we don't have more questions, right? Okay, so with that said, I would like to thank you everybody for uh, participating on the session. I look forward to see you when it's possible next year on the All, All Things uh, Open and stay safe. Thank you.